Welcome. We're celebrating the 13th Sunday after the Pentecost, and this is a video for August the 22nd or before. So glad to have you here. The peace of the Lord be with you, and we're pleased to have Emily as our musical vocalist today. And so, gladness. Take it away, Emily. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, renouncing what is false and evil. We may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson comes from the book of Joshua. You see, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Now Moses is gone. Who takes over? Joshua. So the people are free from slavery. They are now about to go into the country, into the land flowing with milk. So what do you do when freedom lies in front of you? Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Jerusalem of Israel. They presented themselves before God. Joshua said to the people, Now therefore you revere the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness and put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors that you served in the region beyond the river, the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did in those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went among all the peoples through whom we pa passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Ammonites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Here ends the reading of the first lesson. The psalm for this day is Psalm 34 last week, the first 14 verses, and we begin in the 15th verse. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and the, God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to erase the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and serve those whose spirits are crushed. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from everyone. 
God will keep safe all their bones, and not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, but even those who hate the righteous will be punished. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Paul's letter to the people in Ephesus. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. There so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and have everything done and have done everything and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore, fasten the belt of truth around your waist, put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert. Always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Here ends the reading of the epistle lesson. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. So the gospel for this, the 13th Sunday after the Pentecost, comes from the sixth chapter of St. John, beginning at the 56th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It's not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, he said, "Who? this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to say was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that didn't believe and who was the one that would betray him. He said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went around with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The third. Halfway done. 
with the whole Pentecost season, usually around 26 weeks, which is half a year. Half a year we spent learning who this Jesus was. Now the last half, which is what we're in now, is the season of Pentecost, is the season of are you growing as a Christian? Real Christianity? That you give up your life to serve your enemy? To serve your neighbor? To offer forgiveness to those who spit upon you? If you happen to have a television or a computer, I know you do, iPhone or something like that, you will find many on the airwaves talking about the abundant life. And don't talk about this Christianity that involves being attacked, giving up your freedoms so that others may know the Christ. So our epistle lesson is St. Paul talking to the folks that you're going to go through stuff in life that is flesh and blood and pain and struggle, but you belong to a higher order. You see, that are people that went through struggle and slavery and went through the Red Sea and went through the wilderness and now are about to come into the land flowing with milk and honey and God is saying, okay, who's going to be your God? Will it be success? Will it be, will it, will it be privilege and fame? See, I did a uh, confirmation class and asked them what they wanted to be. The student said, famous. None said, I want to be a servant of Christ and die for Christ. Well, at that age, when you're 13, 14, you think that life's ahead of you, and of course it is. But do you make a decision? And have you been making a decision ever since your confirmation to live for yourself and success? Or that you're here to serve Jesus Christ in the midst of a world that rejects that? that fights against that. And again, in Joshua's time, they were surrounded by those who worshipped Baal, the rain god. And they were going into the Middle East. What you need more than anything else is rain, so they'll worship the rain god. But no, they worship the Lord. Whenever you read the Bible and you see in four capital letters, L-O-R-D, it's because it, because it has God's name there. And you shouldn't say God's name out loud unless you're praying for God. Because you just don't want to toss around God's name like he's a you. No. So that's why in the Bible, God's name, which is Yahweh, I am who I am. I will be who I will be. That they said, okay, that's the one who opened the Red Sea. That's the one who made us. That's the one we will follow. But notice that in the years to come and in the subsequent books of the Bible, they begin to follow what the rest of the world follows. So we're asking you, are you following what the rest of the world is following? Or are you following the one who says, take up my cross and follow me? Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Whoever seeks to save their life will lose it. And Jesus comes to that point of saying, I am the bread of life. Not that I want you to look past the last five weeks, but the last five weeks have been all about this. Talk about the manna from heaven. And Jesus splits loaves of bread to feed 5,000 people out of five little loaves of bread. He's showing that he is God. He is the bread of life. He is the manna. Now, for those faithful and Orthodox Jews who really loved God, anything that talked about eating another human being, that wouldn't be kosher. But Jesus is saying, take me. Consume me. Put me in you, and I will abide. I will stay with you. So that all the stuff that happens in life, all the cancer, all the accidents, all the traffic, all the bitterness, all the things that you are persecuted for unfairly, 
I won't leave you. And to help you, put on the belts. Put on faith. Put the shield of faith so they can quench whatever is being thrown at you. Put on the helmet that will protect your head from the thoughts that are not from God. That you can remain in your right mind and use your feet and use your life. And that you will be protected by your faith in God from all the crazy things out there in the world. And you'll brush it aside. Ah. <sighs> that you'll be able to withstand the evil, everything on that evil day. So put a belt of truth. And what's the truth? He is the bread of life. He is the true manna from heaven. He is the son of God. He is the resurrection from the dead. So I don't want you to lose that because everything that I'm seeing, well, not everything, but a whole lot of the stuff I'm seeing on television and radio and hear the complaints of people around, it, oh, the world is terrible. No, we got trees in our yard that are still praising God. I have grass that I have to keep cutting because they keep growing up and praising God. I don't cut them because they're praising God. But life itself is glorious and wonderful. But people are greedy and evil, and evil comes from Satan in all sorts of places. So put on the protection from God and make your choice, like Joshua did. As for me and my house, you guys can go in another direction, but we're going to serve Yahweh. He is the true God. He is the source of our life. What happens? Those who abide in Christ will have resurrection from the dead. What would you give to trade eternal death for eternal life in the kingdom and joy of heaven? And that joy and life and peace can begin right now? Can't say I'm not afraid of anything, but sometimes I feel that way because I know God enfolds me, enfolds my loved ones who have been baptized in him. They've been strengthened and have eaten his body and blood and will have eternal life because that's his promise. The promise of the man who rose from the dead. So here at the middle of the Pentecost season, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Now, a hymn that some people love and other people hate because it's militaristic. Battle. And the battle we're in is for the lives and hearts of others to save them. So, in 509, onward, Christian soldiers. And I toss that to Emily, who will lead us in. Plunge into life, my brothers and sisters, knowing that the Lord is with you and your life has meaning and purpose. So let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Our almighty creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection a life everlasting. Amen. God loves us and he wants to hear our prayers, so we offer the prayers on the back of the celebrate insert. Made the children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church who follow your ways and direction. Make them ready to pray. resurrection. Strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless the fields, the orchards, protect the land from drought. Bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world, the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and people. Builders, heal divisions, inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely, feeling abandoned, Remind all of them of your abiding presence and accompany all who are persecuted, all who are exploited, and use us to protect them and advocate for them. Open us to their cries, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new skill, new community, Sustain enduring friendships, kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring your strength and love to those celebrating birthdays, like Emily and Jeff and Michael and Dorothy, and those celebrating anniversaries, like David and Nancy. Bring their year ahead into great joy and love and gifts from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring your comfort to the Richter family upon Jim's sudden passing. Comfort them. Bless all who mourn the deaths of their loved ones. Thank you for the saints who have gone before us, like Jim. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his smile upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father. Amen. And we close with, abide with us, our Savior.
You're muted. You are still muted. <laughs> 